Hi, it's Mark Bernard here from the Bernard Institute for Cybersecurity. I hope you're having an enjoyable day. Um, one of the things that I'm working on is building a number of short videos to talk about a multitude of different areas within the cybersecurity program to help break down the knowledge and transfer it a little better so that we can get more people involved in the business of cybersecurity. Um, probably going to be touching on more than 100 topics, but today's topic is a good one. Uh, it's NIST cybersecurity frameworks. This is something that I've been working with for a number of years and uh, actually published, I think, the first course back in 2015. And uh, I have a new course, of course, available on my website. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you about an important aspect of this because I've been seeing a lot of businesses today um, trying to adopt the NIST cybersecurity framework. It was really designed by government for government. So it's not really a good fit for commercial enterprises, but nevertheless, I see commercial enterprises trying to adopt it. I think there's an important uh, point that I need to make on how this gets adopted. And it's not always based on a, a gap assessment and a capability uh, a evaluation to determine on a scale of five, one to five, um, how, how you are today and where you need to be uh, for the future. It's, it's more about uh, the integration of risk management. In fact, the NIST cybersecurity framework has a lot to do with risk management. So if you have somebody who's trying to help you implement your NIST cybersecurity framework and they're not really touching on this part of it, then this is something that you need to challenge them on. All right, so let's get uh, started here. Okay, so the NIST uh, cybersecurity framework includes something called tiers. There's four tiers, okay? And it does look similar to a capability maturity model, but its focus is on risk management. So that's the big uh, difference between most capability maturity models that look for a process to be mature. This is a particular, a specific topic that it's trying to get uh, integrated, much like PCI does. Um, it starts with uh, a partial level, and then it uh, goes to uh, risk-informed, repeatable, and adaptable. And these are all different levels. Uh, partial is basically, you know, it's sort of your starting point. If you've never um, adopted NIST before and you're trying to find a starting point, then partial is a good place to start. Risk informed is about where you're, you know, doing risk assessments and you're informing the governance committee uh, about what the risk is so that they can make decisions. It needs to be more than a qualitative risk assessment. It needs to be a quantitative risk assessment. And I'm going to touch on risk assessments in one of my uh, little mini videos that are coming up soon because obviously risk management is the cornerstone of a lot of decision making and calculating a risk uh, rating uh, to allow management to help prioritize the exposure and the treatment of risks is very, very fundamentally important to any sort of risk assessment process. So we're going to talk about that, spend some time on it later. Uh, risk informed, again, is about uh, presenting, conducting risk assessments and presenting the risk to the governance committee. Repeatable means that you actually have a documented process and then you're following that process and it's being audited and make sure that the process is being followed. And then adaptive, of course, is that your risk management process is constantly being improved. So uh, that's very important. That's part of quality management, uh, continual improvement. The, uh, the first uh, ask that they're asking for in the NIST cybersecurity framework uh, when it comes to tiers is uh, somehow to focus on the risk management process itself. So if you don't have a risk management process, you need to get one. Um, I've created uh, risk management methodologies that include uh, risk management policy, procedures on how to conduct risk assessments. Also, it talks about uh, how to um, treat risks. So we have risk treatment plans and uh, also exclusions. There's a number of different points that you want to touch on. The process is just one little part of a methodology, but the methodology is the overarching, um, uh, I guess, document that discusses all the different components. So it's very important. So risk management policy and methodology are usually the two things that I try to get approved first, right out of the gate with the governance committee once it's been established. Now, how do we go about uh, uh, identifying that we're doing risk management? So a lot of organizations are not doing risk assessment. So you need to conduct some kind of a risk assessment. So, you know, the basic components for me when I do a risk assessment are identifying the assets that are at risk, uh, identifying the vulnerabilities associated with those assets, uh, looking at the impact if those vulnerabilities get exploited, 
Okay, and looking at it from the, the, the three principles of information security. So looking at it, what is the impact of confidentiality? If we lost confidentiality, if we lost the confidentiality, unauthorized disclosure um, to uh, a third party or an external party, what would the, the consequence be? Okay, so that's a business impact that needs to be assessed. Um, also, um, integrity. So it's, it's not just the integrity of the information or the data itself, but it's also the integrity of the process. So uh, that's one of the things that you have to do is you have to evaluate the process. This is something that's probably not that well known, but maybe for auditors, we understand it better. Uh, whereas uh, people who try to adopt the NIST framework uh, are maybe more focused on solutioning and they look at what's the end state, the end goal, before they actually walk through the process. And maybe they've never done it before, so they wouldn't understand this, right? And then, of course, the impact to availability. Availability is the easy one to understand. Uh, everybody knows that if you, if you don't have access to the information, then it's unavailable. So that's a business impact. It could stop the business from operating. Um, so initially, you have to do, to achieve Tier 1, you have to actually be doing some kind of risk assessment. Uh, it could be based on one of the generic ones out there. Uh, Octave or ISO 3100 or or I think uh, NIST also has a, a risk management framework. Very basic stuff, uh, not very mature. Probably not uh, the same quality that I would uh, deliver um, because I need to get results. I need to calculate a risk rating. Uh, risk informed means that again you're doing the risk assessments. You're presenting it to management, so the process has to talk about what is the workflow around that, uh, especially if you want it to be repeatable. So. Uh, we have a saying in quality management, say what you do, do what you say, okay? And uh, unless you are documenting the process, it's being reviewed on a regular basis to provide some assurance that it's being followed, and you're cr creating output, um, and you're doing uh, maybe feedback loops. So that would be uh, tier four, where you have a feedback loop. So once you've done the risk assessment, if you, you know, you sit around as a team and you say, um, you know, it could have worked better if we did it like this, right? And then you optimize the process a little bit and document it and make sure it's approved. Okay, so that's the risk management process. So that's one thing you have to deal with. And then uh, there's the integration of the risk management within the program. So this is a big thing, right? Unless you're a specialist uh, in risk management, like I am, I'm a um, ISACA certified, uh, certified in the risk management of information technology. Uh, for instance, unless you're a risk management uh, specialist, you're probably not going to get this right away, right? So how do you integrate risk management within all the different processes? Let's talk about ITIL, like how do you do risk assessment within change management? Or how about software development? Or how about project management? Uh, so project management, of course, has a risk management component if you follow the PMP, but it focuses on the risk to a project, which are, you know, uh, resource constraints, um, you know, uh, materials, basic things like that. Um, whereas uh, cybersecurity risk, we're focusing more on the, the process, the availability of the information, and whether or not the process can uh, meet those requirements. So you need to look at the risk and within each of the different processes that you conduct within the business. So this requires, of course, huge uh, effort, uh, negotiating with the stakeholders, first opening up the discussion with the stakeholders and talking to them about what it is they're doing for risk management. And if they're not already doing something, then coming to some sort of agreement, making them a pitch, showing them what you have from a risk management methodology, uh, bringing them, uh, getting them to buy in, bringing them along, and then helping them to do the integration. And also you have to take it from different uh, levels too. Uh, so if you're brand new to uh, risk management uh, within let's say software development or project management, uh, you need to provide training and communications around that in order to make sure that uh, the different uh, people who are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of project management or software development or systems uh, uh, builds, uh, that they have the tools that they need to do the job because you're not going to be able to sit with each of them and do the job. And uh, it's not a very good governance practice either. So they should call upon you as a cybersecurity expert when they need your help. But other than that, you should be empowering them and engaging them uh, and, and giving them the tools that they need to do this. So uh, integrated risk management program is a big part of NIST. And if you look at all the different um, modules within NIST, so, you know, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. If you look at the five big modules and you think to yourself, how do we integrate risk management within this? Well, 
Okay, so that's a big to do. Now, a lot of people have just surged ahead and they're following a capability maturity model, which is, is not a bad thing, but it's not uh, really focused on what NIST is trying to achieve here. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right. The third thing that they're trying to do here is they're trying to get external participation. So um, public and, uh, and private um, um, you know, professionals get together partnerships, PPP, public and private partnerships. Uh, we also have groups out there like CERT US and we have uh, cybersecurity uh, groups, um, cybersecurity exchange uh, in Ottawa. We also have in the US, we have a number of cybersecurity uh, groups that are collecting information and sharing. So, you, you know, you need a process in order to validate who gets that information. You just can't publish it on the internet. So if you're getting a lot of attacks, uh, you do your risk assessment, you know, what was the risk, what was involved in this attack, um, and the, the participation level, uh, you know, is this is this somebody who just uh, gets uh, regular type information or do they get the, you know, the details? So you need to be able to vet them somehow. You need to have a way to, to bring them on board and to share information in a comfortable way that doesn't make your executives uh, upset, okay, or nervous, because obviously... There's always a possibility that if you if you you know you share information about intelligence about cybersecurity threats that are involving your organization, especially if you're a commercial, not bank, uh, sorry, not government. Um, there's always a possibility that could come back and bite you, right? So if you do end up having a breach, then all of a sudden everybody knows all the details, and now they get lawsuits going against you. So so a lot of commercial enterprises are a little bit nervous about sharing information. So you, you really have to have a rock solid uh, approach on how you're going to get external participation. So obviously you're going to be working with law enforcement um, because in a lot of times when you have a breach, uh, a serious risk to the organization, you need to get their help because it could involve other countries. It could involve other businesses or other jurisdictions or other states or provinces. And uh, you just can't do all that all by yourself. So you need some help and it's good to work with local law enforcement because they're also interested uh, if you want to engage and empower law enforcement, they need to know what's going on so that they can get involved and help as well protect the critical infrastructure, which is really what this is all about. Um, as you know, it's, it's baked into the NIST cybersecurity framework. All right. So those are the four tiers. And, uh, and you get to understand that the focus of NIST is, yes, it's a sort of a high level um, incident handling practice, which I'm going to discuss in another video, but it has a lot to do with risk, the risk process, the integration of risk within your organization, and then the external participation of people uh, to, to discuss the risk that's involved in the NIST cybersecurity framework. All right, that's it for now. Um, I want you to uh, please uh, follow us. Uh, we're on a number of different social media. So we have a LinkedIn business site, uh, Facebook business site. Also, I'm on LinkedIn myself. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. We have Twitter. I have a website. Uh, it's www.bernard-institute.com. You can also email me or call me. I'd love to hear about you if you have any questions at all and I can be of any assistance. Please do not hesitate to give me a call and I look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, I hope your cybersecurity systems are all protected and that you don't have any breaches today. Have a great day.